Welcome back to the wonderful B Stream here for the Katowice Group Stage. I'm Gareth, joined by Lacoste, and we've got a couple of series for you today. Three best of threes, and we're going to kick things off with uh, a battle of the Americas, let's call it. South America against North America, e.g. against Infamous. What do you think is going to happen here, my dude? What's, what, what are we in store for? I want to see Infamous winning game one. Then things uh, will heat up uh, for EG. Uh, I mean, I love seeing uh, North America versus South They're America. I mean, in general, I loved even North America against North America. We saw a yeah. uh, game yesterday going to three games, uh, Optic uh, against Complexity. Sadly for Complexity, they are out. Um, this should be an interesting match because uh, when they play uh, online, uh, South American teams have a disadvantage um, in ping. We'll see. We'll see what they are made of. Uh, South American teams are um, always considered uh, as underdogs, um, so they have one thing, and that's uh, even if they win or they lose, they I, I don't think they care uh, in terms of um, being an underdog. Uh, you always have that uh, let's call it advantage uh, because you know. An underdog is what it, what it is. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, you know Adfinem or Mouse Sports, whatever you want to call them. You know, they were you know, losing against these big teams. It's like, oh, they're the underdog. It, it, whatever, they're, yeah. they're meant to lose, right? Yeah. But when they win, that's when you like you know the hype nah, starts building yeah. up behind them and everything looks good. Build that momentum. Absolutely. Just, uh, from winning a couple of games, uh, same thing, same thing uh, happened to when SG uh, took down Secret. Yeah. They look reasonably good, but so far, Omni, Io, and Rubik for Evil Geniuses going to go for the unkillable strat with two saving heroes behind some big, beefy cores. Viper, Razor, Beastmaster, Band with a DP and a Lycan focusing on a lot of these a lot of these kind of laning core heroes, you want to say, you know, pushing power as well behind a lot of these guys, as Infamous do like to pick them, while Infamous banning out, what, Bounty, Gyro, Cottle, and then the TB and Dusa. So a couple of heroes there that could have been nicely saved up and kept alive by the Io and the Omni. Tiny Ancient Apparition as an opener, opener though, is relatively uncommon for my eyes to see. It's uh, usually Tiny gets banned out, but EG just let them have it. Yeah, uh, well, CK uh, could be the hero that uh, both teams are looking for. Uh, AA, good pair up with a CK. On other hand, we have... Uh, Io as well. They want that, uh, as you mentioned, the beefy core. They have Omni Io, so you can pick uh, something super greedy. Yeah. Go for anything you want. Night Stalker now for Infamous. So this likely will be that tiny off lane that we saw the other day. 5 AA and then the roaming 4 Night Stalker for them. NS and AA, decent heroes against Io and Omni with the silence, with the ice blast. Pretty good. Then you've got the vision game. Infamous will be able to play around. The Ten Ice Blast and that yes. Darkness. I, I love the nickname on one of the infamous Five players, Standing remaining. Melk. I don't know if he's going for a Melk Award or what's happening. Oh, you can't see it. I don't see that. Maybe I have him in a friend list. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says Standing Kiyumi Sakusa. And yours says Standing Melk. That's very interesting. Valve servers are, are trolling with us here. Visage for EG. Core. Core Visage. Yes? Should be Core. Yeah. Offline Omni, Io Rubik, uh, supports, remaining. Visage. Uh, I mean, Visage can be played uh, on uh, safe lane as well, but uh, I highly doubt it. Uh, this hero is, if, if you want to play it solo, it's uh, best for the mid. Yeah, I guess they've, they've also got a couple of options. We, we have seen safe lane Omni before, right? We have seen the one roll, you know, phase boots, drums, Omni come out of the safe lane, maybe an aggro tri lane from EG, Visage was known as the king of the tri lanes, you know, back when he was yeah. in that support role. As a core, does he you know, still offer the same thing You're with an Io and a Rubik Sven here? Sven Lina Visage. That, that oh, was yes. when uh, <laughs> E-Home during, uh, I think it was, it was ESWC in France, where, where they actually invented the tri lane. The invention of the tri yeah. lane. Oh, well. You're old enough to remember. <laughs> PL, uh, no surprise there. Uh, because they have no lockdown on the side of uh, EG and uh, no AOE clear. So they're going to need to pick up uh, something that uh, builds into Battle Fury, which Arthes is going to build probably. Visage will buy Maelstrom. Get that, uh, get that lightning prop going. We saw Infamous play PL in their match 
yesterday against Team Secret. Yeah, they had the PL Tiny. There were a couple of interesting moments where PL got tossed into yeah, static storms and things that. like that. Hopefully, not this time around. But like, like you're saying, no illusion clear. No. He's got that doppelganger to get out of trouble. They should ban out Sven. Om Omni and Io yeah. with Sven against, against the, the PL. PL. Yeah, it's, it sounds uh, pretty suicidal if they, they don't ban it out. I mean, they can still, if, if Sven gets banned out, uh, they can still go for, let's say, uh, something Five more greedy, uh, maybe even a PA. Not, not the best against the Tiny, because she does not have a lot of HP. I really want to see Troll. I know I said it yesterday and it got banned out. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I feel like Troll here for EG could work pretty damn nicely. Uh, I mean, Battle Fury I Troll, anyway. Uh, but you don't benefit... Uh, too much from his ulti yeah. on, uh, on other heroes. N True. None of them deal any any damage, and he already has increased uh, attack speed from from Io. Just imagine the Io attack speed, the little <laughs> machine gun, <laughs> mini gun Io. Infamous final pick. Five seconds remaining. Mid laner for them. The Quap banned out. No death profit. Is this a game where you consider going for a tinker? Again, we're looking at this. You know, lack of catch, lack of vision outside of the Visage Familiars. I guess Ribbit could maybe steal the Hunt in the Night, but no, it's a Brewmaster for Infamous. So it's uh, either safe lane or mid lane tiny, brew off lane. Looks like it. That's a lot of um, a lot of nuke damage going out from from Infamous. You may now select your heroes. Oh, life Radiance Life Stealer time. We've seen that a fair amount against the PL. Yeah, uh, could still be. Battle Fury, right? Could be, yeah. But uh, I think uh, the popular build right now is uh, is the Radiance into Crest uh, because MKB is not uh, the best item. I mean, it's the best item against uh, Miss Chance against the Evasion, uh, but it's still not hundred percent. It doesn't feel and and like all these cores, you're not gonna build uh, MKB. Uh, until let's say fourth, fifth item, and at one point it's uh, kind of too late. We I, we saw yesterday in a game uh, who was playing Mineski against um, VP. Uh, they had Life Stealer with Radiance and Crest against uh, Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer couldn't do anything. It, yeah. he just doesn't deal damage. It's it's actually crazy. You know, you you so often think about this PL being able to swarm the Life Stealer, but with that missed chance and the Radiance burn, what things become. Very nice all of a sudden. We'll see what we get into though as we swing ourselves into game. <laughs> Faded love the IO. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. <laughs> and a capital D and a capital E. But away we go. Game one in this best of three. Evil geniuses taking on infamous Schofield Night Stalker heading out. Everyone pretty Prepare much with standard. Item startings tiny here for MNZ. Stout and Quilling Blade for him heading up to the towards the safe lane. Papita the PL mid. And the Ancient Apparition coming in from behind. Melk, you know him has. Uh, is, is he still tagged up as Melk in your game, the AA? Yeah, he is. That's, that's very interesting. He must, have, he must have changed that today and only yours is updated. Because he's playing against EG or something like that. But uh, no, not for me. Down bottom, Old Stinger, the Brewmaster. H how do you find these laning matchups now? You know, Io with Omni up at top against a Night Stalker, Tiny, Double Melee. The AA will be there. But it feels like potentially this... Io Omni could get away with a lot in lane. Yeah, they're going to have uh, an easy lane, in my opinion. Uh, Io, already saving up for bottle, has a shared tango and the ward. Uh, I don't think they can out-harass. Like, it's a double heal. Uh, they just need levels. Once they get to, let's say, level 3, it's going to be pretty impossible to kill uh, EG's off lane. So try early and try often. Force them out yeah, of lane. Yeah, also mid lane Visage uh, against Phantom Lancer should be... Uh, Phantom Lancer should have an upper hand uh, uh, at early levels, but once uh, Visage hits level 6, uh, well, yo, Melk. So, yeah. You see? See, he sees. Why is it me? Why, why am I the only one that doesn't see Melk? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, PL with Stout quelling the Phantom Rush with that extra Agi. Uh, I don't remember seeing that matchup, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure I mean, PL outfarms Visage the first like three levels, right? Yeah, at he least. should. Um, since the lanes are going to be pretty static for EG, like their heroes can't really rotate and uh, get some kills, especially on on a mid, like a Phantom Lancer. So it's going to be one versus one.
classic matchup. Maybe uh, Night Stalker comes and helps, but he needs to be top. Uh, so it's going to be probably a double pull from uh, Omni Knight and Io. They really can't can't stop it. 30 seconds to battle. I'm just wondering now about this bottom lane. Uh, you're talking about the kind of static lanes. It definitely doesn't feel like Misery can leave Artesia alone, right, against the Brewmaster. Even if you get that magic wand up, Brewmaster's still going to be slapping life together around a little bit. Well, it, it's a good uh, Brewmaster game, considering how the EG is uh, placing their lanes. Even if they try to go on him, if uh, Telekinesis is used, he can just TP away. They have nothing else the to stun. Begins. True. Old Stinger rolls the barrel forward, Arteezy scared, mm -hmm. and they will get the double there. Triple bounty rune here for Infamous to start things off. Very nice. A little aggressive movement forward. So no little dragging or pulling here from the Brewmaster. He's just going to block up his wave. Try and keep it all nice and natural. And it looks like it's going to be the same up at top lane. No one's messing with the equilibrium too much. Just going to go for the nice little natural blocks. Night Stalker hunting for the Io a little bit. They've got this nice Observer Ward watching Crit and his every move. And Io might put himself in danger here. Spots the Night Stalker though. Omni should be fighting against the tiny AA for now with that purification. And crit careful. No armor on Io. A couple of punches. Very dangerous against this Boots first Night Stalker. Uh, they just need levels. Uh, Omni Knight uh, almost level 2. He just uh, wants to give him that level. Gonna block the camp. Make sure there's no pulls Dyer's across. Brewmaster now did get dragged back into the tier one, but Stinger takes the wave with him. This will secure him a nice amount of experience. Again, this Night Stalker is just permanently hunting the Io in the back, while the other two focusing the Omni there with a chilling touch used though. EG, big red flag signals them to get the hell back. Yeah, this is what the offlaners uh, do most of the time. They just uh, leave the first wave, then pull the second one uh, to their tier one tower. How's how's mid doing? Five four against four one. That's pretty good from fear. That verify is helping out. Null into Aquila looks like crit up at top. Does get the purification thrown on him, and with the bottle going, looks like he's fine. Another tether in three seconds time. So male. Aggressively moving into the tiny there and just trying to bully him back. This is just the kind of pressure, you know, it's... You look at the CS, tiny is still 7 and 3, but it's, it's not safe CS, right? It's getting under your skin, getting into your head a little bit, like I've got to work hard, I've got to really focus on every single last hit I'm going for here. Does have a big wave coming into his tower though, as the tiny with that cleave. Chip away at Sumail's life total a little bit, and now they rotate Misery here, instant D ward. Oh, they knew this was happening. So it, it means Brewmaster will get a lot on the bottom, but uh, so will Nyx. Nyx will still free farm. So a trade down there. Sumail just runs straight towards the two dire supports. Send them back and away. Arteezy trying to deal with some Brewmaster illusions now as Old Stinger does manage to bait out the rage and the open wounds without losing too much himself. Although the Brew doesn't have a magic wand or anything, just keeps throwing out these claps and crits. Make sure RTZ is on edge a little bit. This is where PL starts to pull ahead though now. 15-6 against the 8-2. and two. Fear did very well in the initial couple of waves, but we expected Phantom Lancer with his Phantom Rush just to be able to out-CS in this early laning stage. Well, overall, he has a better uh, attack animation and uh, the... Extra agility rush, plus he has a Quelling Blade, so... MNZ's in trouble here. Will be the first blood. Samael just walked him down with the help of Misery's lift. AA and Night Stalker will be fine to get away, though. So an aggressive tri-lane up against the defensive tri-lane. And it looks like EG coming out on top with uh, multi-layered defensive heroes here. Omni and Io. So difficult to bring down unless you're able to focus down that Crit Wisp. Now this EG's lineup uh, is built around oh, momentum. Tiny again? No, this can't happen. One more punch, is that enough? It is! One by one! They're gonna yeah, die. He's gonna die as well. In behind the tier one tower, Sumail rushes forward. Level two purification to go, but... Oh, has he juked himself through these trees? Cuts down two tangos, gets a path out to safety. EG know where he is, but they can't get in deep enough. Misery pops a mango to look for a lift, but it's night time now, so Schofield... Slips out of their reach. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Misery's still hunting. 
<laughs> oh, there's some cut trees here. Oh, hello. Well, wait, no, yes, maybe. No. Nope. Doesn't want to get involved. So they're gonna ha uh, get a lot on this top lane, uh, build around Omni Knight. Uh, they just need the uh, Visage to get uh, some levels and a um, couple of items, and uh, that's where they're gonna go. But they still have uh, Life Stealer. Was probably gonna build into Radiance, and uh, so they have a super late game secured. But uh, what I expect from EG, if they continue to dominate, they the the timing is about 20-25 minutes with uh, with these heroes to try to take all tier two towers, threaten Roche, and then go for a high ground. Oh, Schofield! He knows the courier is here somewhere. Has he backed up at the wrong time? That oh, slipped. No, right that's past the right them. time. He he can't kill the courier. He needs. Uh, Three, Three hits, hits plus true. yeah, plus a shield. Regeneration. Would have been almost impossible. Fear chipped back. Misery in behind this visage. Phase boots in for Schofield though. Misery could be in a difficult spot here. I don't know if the Night Stalker can see him though. It doesn't look like he had any vision. Now he did though. There's the ping. He does actually catch a glimpse over of the Rubik, just for a split second. The Night Stalker wandering around on this radiant side of the map. It seems like he's trying to track back on this Rubik, make sure that he knows you know, where the rotations are coming, make sure that Misery isn't getting any free action to go in. It's still, though, this Tiny starting to have a difficult time, but also Sumail having a much better time now. Phase Boots wand up, and EG have definitely enabled their Omni to have a, a very good laning stage. Yeah, he didn't even go for one level of Repel. It means that they're not feel threatened by their heroes at all. I mean. One level of repel is always good, especially against uh, heroes like AA Tiny Night Stalker, who everything is uh, magical damage. Yeah. All right, Night Stalker with the face boots, level two invis. They have a sentry, but it's just okay. Expired. Just expired. <laughs> Very close. Samael charging under the tier one though. Balls of steel as he runs forward. The team oh, from nice BL block. coming in. The misery Rubik trapped inside. You're right, Night Stalker locks him in. Can I get any more? It doesn't look like it. Io and Omni all fall back. I don't think it was necessary for PL to TP. They were not uh, diving that deep. Uh, I wonder what uh, Brewmaster is doing. He has brown boots. He should at least get uh, Soul Ring for the for the region on a lane and uh, some mana as well, plus Quelling Blade, so he can easy last hit easier. Are you telling me the 59 ex uh, gold and 43 experience for PL wasn't worth TPing for? <laughs> Break even there. Does miss out in mid lane though, that gives Fear time to get level six and a half. The birds are up, so his farming speed, but also pressure across the map increased quite significantly. They don't have much to set up for the birds though, they've got like open wounds, telekinesis, but I think Misery with the way he's been moving around the map, he's gonna be the one that is looking for these openings non-stop. Speaking of openings, Old Stinger moving in, level six is up, doesn't need to split here, but might be forced to if the birds landing are good. They stun up three, but Fear saved up by crit. There's the fairy fire to go as well. The split is used, and they're trying to dive in deep here for the crit IO. With a few punches of Night Stalker, they'll look to bring him down, and they will indeed with the cyclone forward. Visage caught as well. Two for nothing special here for Infamous, as they go in deep and they execute perfectly. Yeah, that's a good rotation from uh, Infamous. Uh Panda can't really do anything on a bottom lane. Uh, I mean, he can last hit to get levels, but uh, they want to make use of that split. Plus, they're going to deal some damage to the tower as well with uh, Aquila on uh, Phantom Lancer. This is the ward that we discussed about yesterday, which you told it was my favorite ward, but it was in the range of a tower and it got denied. <laughs> <laughs> tower yeah. is under it was like it was just there on the very edge of the of the circle, unfortunately. I like what Stinger did as he TP'd out though, tanking the tower so the illusions and the creeps were kept alive. Back to Fountain with our full hand of Midas for the Brewmaster. Alright, so, so that's what he's going for. Um, that's not a bad idea. In, in a game yesterday uh, when Newbie, Newbie KP actually had a bad time with a panda, then bought Brown Boots uh, Stout Shield Blink Dagger and couldn't find any openings, which ended up uh, being pretty bad for them. Uh, this is like more of a late game oriented panda because I mean it's a good timing on a Midas nine minutes in uh, plus sometimes you build Midas after after a blink but this way it works as well like yeah. you you want to give panda levels once he gets to level 20 and 25 that's a game changer I guess also the fact that like he just used split as well right so buying a blink would yeah. feel kind of useless they might get a kill on misery he has a TP ready 
Oh, no lift. Clap in three seconds. Arteezy oh, comes in and bullies them away. Dyer's Nicely done there by the life stealer. Doesn't even lose any CS, it looks like. Yeah, I I'm glad the Papita is actually going for the Fusal Blade. In yesterday's game's uh, Virtus Pro against Fnatic, uh, BL went for Battle Fury, which is. Uh, not the best build always. Uh, you should sometimes uh, go Radiant go back to old roots. Was that Abed? Uh, I'm not sure who played it. Um, they didn't have enough to actually deal damage, especially to Radiant's that uh, life dealer uh, I mentioned. Attack. Because of all the invasion, Battle Fury actually didn't do anything. Super unfortunate. Misery given mid lane now to try and get towards six. Old Stinger still lurking around and looking for a target to backstab in this mid lane again. Where is Fear? Radiance Has himself a ring of Aquila, nearly the medallion done. Ten minutes in, sitting at just under 3,000 net worth, so... Struggling a touch. Not looking too bad, though, for EG as they progress forward. But look at this infamous side. Invis Schofield again. The Night Stalker just keeps finding these runes, and now he spots out Fear. He knows the birds are about a 1,000 range in front of the hero itself. And Stinger... Oh, has he been scouted here? He has indeed. They fly overhead, and EG, they know. Something funky is happening. Yeah, Arteezy, meanwhile, on the bottom lane is seven, seven. Easy time. Level 10, 10 minutes in. 3,000 gold, getting closer to that relic. Papita helped up by Schofield. Jumping onto Misery. And they need that Phantom Rush, but it looks like it was cancelled or something. They'll go for the Void again under this tier 2. Misery sticks up, but will drop. But you look at the space he's creating, that's what, two, three heroes in the mid lane killing a Rubik while they deny that Fear denies the mid tier two, uh, tier one up top lane. This is what I wanted to look at. It's the AA ice blasting out, but the repel onto crit will keep him up and running. Schofield does pop him though. With the void and the shatter as the primal split arrives. And now there's no repel TP for Samael. So he's in a spot of bother now, trying to kind of juke himself away through the creeps. But there really is no chance of escape here. He can try and wand and purify, but he will be tossed into the air and killed. But this is so much damage on the tier 2. And this Io and Omni just running towards the Tiny non-stop. Yeah, this gave Tiny some gold. He's getting uh, closer to a blink dagger, which will help them initiate ones. Once they get two blink daggers on uh, Tiny and uh, on Panda, which is going to come pretty quickly, considering uh, he has a Midas and it's going to give him levels. So they should play around it. Visage is still not a threat. Uh, life stealer. Yeah, Rubik. Are you going to die here? It looks like it. But Papita might lose his life for this. Life stealer with an open wounds again. Ah, that is the PL dead. Crit will be able to grab himself a bah, never mind. Arteezy takes the bounty rune. Fine. Yeah, there's another one here. Just let that one go into Crit's bottle. Yeah, that's a uh, sacred relic on Lifestealer already. And th they don't have an answer for uh, for a Lifestealer when in rage. Like, Panda's gonna control Omni Knight in these fights with, uh, with the Cyclone. Tiny needs and NS plus uh, AA. They need to blow up uh, Io. And tiny blink dagger very nearly here Samael gets out from that ice blast AOE he pops his drums and runs away there's a toss ready but Samael is too tanky they know they can't bring him down the warding vision continues around this mid lane for infamous another high ground one up here yeah I don't think we're gonna see any like uh, offensive relocates because they have nothing to start a fight with even though they can bring uh, three people at once like they can bring uh, infested nikes in someone plus io plus one hero so they can be around the map pretty quickly yeah their, their setup is like rubik left or birds yeah that, it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad initiation the, the only way they're gonna fight is force enemy to go into them because they have a lot of a lot of heal and sustain and these relocates are probably just gonna be uh, used defensively radiance top tower oh, is under some attack. And crit. Back up towards top lane. Looking for a Yule Scepter on that Samael Omni, while down at bottom, Arteezy closing in on that Radiance, about 300 or so, 400 gold away. A PL and Night Stalker set up camp down bottom. But EG, very happy to just kind of sit back and farm. You've got a Medallion, nearly a full Helm of the Dominated on Fear, so he's going for this big kind of army build on the Visage. Very heavy utility, which, you know, we... We knew what's going to happen when he switched towards that mid lane. He was going to be that kind of, you know, timing pushing hero that didn't require too much uh, laning phase prowess. Just aim for the team fights. 
Uh, Tiny has a blank dagger now. They should make a move before the Radiance. Uh, Phantom Lancer getting closer to his Diffusal Blade. Uh, 400 gold away. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Such a, a calming yet obnoxious noise at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. It, it uh, gets under my skin a little bit, that IO, IO orbs. Tiny. You mentioned the Blink Dagger. Really, the only targets he can go on feels like everyone dogpiles onto the Omni or the Visage, or he just tries to find the Io and the Rubik, the quick and easy kills. So far, with the scan up on the high ground, the Dire, they knew someone was here. EG, full retreat, though. Misery, I don't know if he can get away from this. Oh, fear blocks out the Night Stalker, so it looks like the battle in the river will start. The fight around the Bounty Rune will end. Fear's Visage has to try and run away, but with this PL dodging out from the familiar stuns, Papita with a good plays, gets himself forward, aggressively moving into Fear, the back end, Primal Split, sends Omni into the air, Fear's still alive and sprinting back towards his shrine, but it's not active yet, and Arteezy joins in, takes down the Storm Panda, he's got his Radiance going, burning, and getting into the mix of things, but PL is dodging away, Brewmaster now, Tiny left nice away, say, nice LT. TP comes out, the Ice Blast, what does it hit onto Fear? Yeah, he but he looks like he's okay resistance. though. resistance. Unless the Night Stalker, oh, not quite able to get into range. So out of that, what did we lose? The IO and that's it. Yeah, these fights are lasting for so long because EG has no no control in these fights. They have Rubik Lift and the uh, Visage Birds. And that's, that's it. Panda has a uh, Blink Dagger, enough gold actually to buy it. Middle tower. But again, it's that, that case of EG are unkillable, right? You can kill the IO, but they've still got the Omni, the yeah. lifestealer. It's, it's uh, daytime right now, so they should just go for tier 2 towers, uh, and they know split is on cooldown. So male will hold the line forward. Oh, Double damage for RTZ. Because why not? Absolutely. This is why we can't have nice things. Double damage, Arteezy Lifestealer straight into the Roshan pit. Fear with that helm has himself a nice little centaur for the stomps. Infamous, either have no idea this is happening, which is fully understandable. You don't expect Roshan to all of a sudden be dead like that. Also, probably didn't want to go fighting, like you're mentioning, for the same reasons. The lack of nighttime here. Darkness was available, maybe they could have popped it, but no Ice Blast, no Primal Split. All right, uh, no this is... Uh Unconventional uh, panda build. Look what he has queued up. Midas Randy. Very interesting. Schofield deep in behind enemy lines, though. Found by the familiar stuns. The chain stun from Fear. Godly. Uh, from their visage. Well, down a bottom lane, RTZ TP's in to try and deal with the tiny and the PL. Looks like Papita will doppelganger TP away. RTZ has to clear through the waves. So, Midas Radiance Brew. I've seen this a couple of times, very rarely, but uh, we'll talk about it in a sec because mid lane again, EG just non-stop running in. Oh, they've got the chain stuns potentially here with the Centaur stomp and Papita is dead. Yeah, nice again. micromanagement by Fear. Stuns him twice, then puts uh, Centaur Conqueror in front. His old man fingers have still got it, Lacoste. Still got the moves. Yeah, he, he turned 30 a couple of days ago. He's actually just sharing unit control with crit, obviously. Dyer's <laughs> middle tower is under attack. Still very, very good stuff out from Fear. You know, like we were saying, laning stage, we, we knew when he was put into that mid lane. He's a you know he's a solid player, he's a good player, but he's not, not the same caliber as what we expect from you know the top tier mid players. But they give him these timing heroes or these heroes that get one or two items and all of a sudden they're activated and ready to go and he really does show off yeah, in quite some style. Even though he had a bad start, it, it doesn't matter because this lineup is uh, uh, based around them grouping up as five since they have no gank potential whatsoever. They might go for tier three right now, they have uh, everything ready. Aegis is up. This is the way they start a fight. They, they just push in and uh, force you to actually go on them and then heal up and uh, regroup and go in again. Yeah, walk into us. We dare you to pop your ulties and waste them. EG. What do we have Yasha on RTZ moving into the SNY. Misery has found himself some money as well. He was very poor for an extended period in this game, but 1700 saved up with all of these towers dying. Definitely helping out RTZ. Sprints straight forward, looking to try and zone out the Phantom Lancer. Spooky stuff, though, in the oh, back end. Look at the Brewmaster. They have a vision on him. Stinger. He's trying to come in. 
Ice Blast flies forward. Crit is ready here with a tether or a relocate. They send Omni into the air as oh, expected. Nice the save, save on Misery drags him back to Fountain. In fact, a Schofield ripped apart by the Visage and the Lifestealer pretty much untouched in the front end of this fight. The Night Stalker will buy back, but the Stomp coming through, the Brew split there, ends and stolen by Misery, who can use it to turn around the fight. They jump in with a Fade Bolt, the Avatos clears up crit, but here's the Primal Split. MNZ in so much trouble, he doesn't know what's coming his way. The full army of evil geniuses, as they move forward now to look for Tier 3s and racks. What, what an amazing steal, honestly, being able to take down buildings with this primal split of Rubik. If they wanted to kill Io like that, they need Tiny to actually go on him. Uh, but uh, nice reaction there from uh, from Sumail. Uh, good team fight control. Repels Io, then Io takes uh, Misery because they were focusing Misery. Then they regroup, come back. This is a a textbook example of how how to play some dotes. EG doing very well. Nine to nine. Definitely not telling the whole story here. 8,000 net worth lead for EG with Lifestealer having a full SNY coming out on the courier. Yep, there's the Sanj being delivered out. And now it looks like EG have their eyes set on the middle lane. Aegis, how long do we have? One minute, pretty much exactly from now. And Misery does die up towards the top, but it's the, it's the push into mid. The pings come out onto the tier three. And Papita knows that danger is coming, even with Rubik miles away. I guess the good thing is they took the split away from Rubik now, so we won't have that. So pressure forward, and again, Infamous trying to go for backstabs, but Vision is here. Ice Blast not going to land onto anyone. The Yule's up from the Omni himself, in fact, takes off the silence, so Schofield has to run, but he can't run far enough away. The birds with that Vision, the catch of them, reasonably oh, good, and in Arteezy's the meantime... in the base. Where, what? How is Arteezy in the base? He's killed off two people alone. He now was... Stinger's in trouble, getting chased out behind the tier. Four towers, a big guardian angel arrives, and Phantom Lancer has nothing left to do anything at all. Gigi is called. Oh, what? what? Artur is just spinning inside the freaking enemy fountain. <laughs> he wants him tiny. Sadly for tiny, he can't to toss away uh, BKB the, or magic immune units anymore. Uh, then went for AA, who tried to help him, kill him as well. This radiant build is so good. I, I said that they're going to look into time between 20 and 25 minute mark. Uh, <laughs> this is a 22 minutes in. Uh, the game is over. Yeah. They, just, they just needed the, to survive uh, the laning stage, not feed away uh, too much kills. Uh, they only killed, what, Fear once at the mid lane. It, it really doesn't matter. These are all empty kills. They, they got the tower uh, a couple of minutes after, but uh, when they group as five, the lineup from Infamous really, they can't do too much. And the 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 build on Panda, like you have Panda with the Hand of Midas and no items whatsoever. He had uh, a relic. A relic. It's, it's really irrelevant. Yeah, uh, I, I guess you look at the builds. Everything looks okay for kind of the game state, but you go back to the draft and you think, eg, just you know, in hindsight, had that five man group up and push that just could not be stopped. Pretty much, right? They it definitely feels like they knew what Infamous wanted, what they were going to be doing, and how to defeat it. Definitely a class and a cut above the South Americans in game number one of their best of three. We'll find out, though, maybe a sneaky little cheese strat, some kind of some kind of uh, pre-made draft will come out of Infamous. We'll find out. Game two coming up in just a touch. Short break. See you guys in a bit.